Just got word that Senator Coons, who is shaking his hand there, giving him a hug. You know why he's giving a hug? Because Senator Coons offered, in a spirit of bipartisanship, to vote present, to change his vote to present, which would allow this nomination to go from the committee to the Senate floor. Uh, we just witnessed the bipartisan hug there as they all file out of the room. Essentially what this means was the vote was tied 10 to 10. They were stuck. Coons changed his vote to present instead of no. And now the nomination of uh, CIA Director Mike Pompeo to be Secretary of State goes to, uh, goes to the Senate floor. And they do have enough votes. Uh, let's bring in our senior political analyst, Britt Hume, uh, with this breaking news happening. Uh, Britt, your thoughts on this and uh, the whole kind of moment that this was, getting a Secretary of State nomination out of the Foreign Policy Committee? Well, I, I think, Brett, that they had a number of options. They could have uh, re-voted after Johnny Isaacson got back from his funeral. They could have had another meeting and voted again. Uh, it could have been reported out of the committee with an unfavorable recommendation, which gets it to the floor, unless uh, Democrats wouldn't go along with that, which would seem a little odd. But I think what happened is about as good an outcome as you could expect for the Republicans and for this nominee under the circumstances. Um, but it's characteristic of the Senate kind of at its best that that uh, a member of the other party who, was in, who will probably, he'll, uh, Coons will almost certainly vote no on the floor. But allowing the nomination to proceed to the, for the full consideration by the Senate is, is pretty much in the tradition of the way the Senate is usually operated. So I think it's a good development all the way around. You just saw Senator Paul leave uh, the committee room there, Brett, and obviously he had a change of heart after meeting with the president and also meeting with CIA director and nominee uh, Pompeo. Mike, uh, well, I think... In the case of uh, Rand Paul, he's idiosyncratic. He's uh, one of a kind. Uh, he votes what he considers to be his conscience. Uh, in this case, however, I think you know he must have had it in the back of his mind that Donald Trump uh, is popular in the state of Kentucky, where he hails from, and that if his vote were the decisive vote that were actually had the effect of killing the nomination, which I don't think would have happened, but if it had been, that would have been problematic for him. So he so he gets treated to uh, a, a meeting with the president and a meeting with nominee Pompeo, and he gets some bland assurances from, from Pompeo that he will support the president's policies. How could he do otherwise? And, and changes his vote so he can go home and say, well, I extracted these uh, promises and now I'm satisfied and uh, presumably his constituents will be happy and he doesn't have anything to worry about. Yeah. What does this say, though, Britt, about where we are in that you have this nominee uh, who's a CIA director who just got back from Pyongyang meeting with Kim Jong-un as the delicate dance of getting this meeting potentially with the president and the North Korean leader is still being worked out. Uh, having this issue um, and obviously kind of a speed bump along the way to confirmation. It is very much, Brett, a sign of the times. We live in an age of partisanship on uh, at a level that I've never seen before, and I've been doing this around Washington for about about 40-some years now, and I've never seen anything quite like this. I mean, you had uh, Democrats know perfectly well that Mike Pompeo, on the face of it, is perfectly qualified. He's, you know, he's served in the, in the Congress for a long time. He has glittering academic credentials. As CIA director, you don't have any real objections about him there. Uh, he's clearly qualified. As you note, he's been engaged in these negotiations, very important negotiations with North Korea already. Uh, and you had things like Gene Shaheen, the Democratic senator from New Hampshire, saying she was going to vote against him because of his position on abortion. That's almost laughable at any other time. Um, but that is where we are. Uh, profound partisanship and a constituency for many of these Democrats who will be satisfied with nothing less than all out opposition to Donald Trump and every single thing he does, even if these things are otherwise would normally go forward without objection. Uh, you know, it is said of Donald Trump that he is that he has stepped all over all kinds of norms in our country, and perhaps he has. But he has induced his opponents to do the same thing. And this behavior toward this nominee is but one example of that. Well, that's right. And last thing, as we look at this state visit by the French uh, president and his wife, obviously they'll have this big state dinner. There are no Democrats invited to that state dinner. That seems to be a first as well. Yeah, that's another norm that has been ignored. I think, I think that's regrettable. But I would say this about the relationship with Emmanuel Macron. He is 
an important ally for this president. And, you know, we've had a long alliance with the French going back to the Revolutionary War, and it is, it is, it is stood for a long time, but it has not been untroubled. And you may remember, Brett, what, what fits the French gave Colin Powell as he was trying to round up support in the U.N. for a second resolution to authorize the Iraq War. And the French foreign minister was trailing him around and arriving everywhere he'd just left in the country uh, to try to talk people out of going along with the U.S. So the relationship has had some serious problems in recent years. And the fact that it seems so strong now, despite some obvious disagreements, um, you know, the, the Paris Climate Treaty being one of them, uh, and the and the and of course the the uh, the, the resolution the, the uh, Iran nuclear bill being the other, uh, it is still an important achievement for the president that he seems to have come to this relationship with one of our most important European allies at a time when the president can use whatever support in Europe he can get. Brett, it's always good to have you on, especially on these days, uh, for your expertise. Brett, thanks. Well, thanks, Brett.